dare you break wind before me? I'm sorry, baby. I didn't know it was your turn. <laughs> Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 origins of weird words. Oh. oh. <gasps> Have you been eating that sandwich again? Sandwich. Are you being smart with me? If you're being smart with me, young lady, you're going to be punished. Punished for being smart? For being a smart aleck. How do you say lawyers in Spanish? Lawyers? Uh, abogados. El grande avocados. Av <laughs> for this list, we're discussing some of the strangest words with even stranger beginnings. If there are any odd bits of language with odd origins we missed, please tell us about them using your own words in the comments. If you like what you're hearing, be sure to check out the full song at the link below. And now I'm coming around the bend. And babe, like the one that I want to say, that's not fair. Tell me what I'm not I've been searching for. Number 10, shambles. The etymology of this word is, well, a shambles. I bet that cleared your sinuses, eh? <laughs> Total shambles, as per usual. Thanks. Its roots stem from the word stool in various languages, as well as words that mean kiosk or vendor stall. In English, this morphed over time into a general term for somewhere where meat was peddled, and eventually it came to refer to where animals were butchered. Then, in the early 1900s, shambles became an ironic term for describing something as a bloody mess, by comparing it essentially to a slaughterhouse. What the hell happened all of a sudden? This car turned into a cannoli. It's secure phone, and it saved your life. Look at you, you're in shambles. So think about that the next time your life is in shambles. Number 9. Tragedy The ancient Greeks helped found a lot of things we take for granted nowadays, from philosophy to democracy. But they also heavily influenced Western theater traditions and genres, particularly tragedy. The original Greek word, tragodia, referred to a play or poem with an unhappy ending to contrast with comedies. Okay, uh, who is the father of Greek tragedy? Anyone? Anyone? Okay, as close it is. His trilogy, The Oresteia. But its literal meaning was goat song, of all things. Whether it was because of the Greeks' legends about satyrs, or because goats were used as a prize during poetry contests, or for some other reason, we don't know. But whatever the reason, it is still decidedly bizarre. Number 8. Avocado Avocados are a tricky little fruit. Aside from being good for guacamole, harder than steel until they suddenly aren't, and technically a berry, avocados also have some rather surprising etymological origins. Plenty have noticed the strange similarity between the Spanish word for lawyer, abogado, and the English word avocado. How do you say lawyers in Spanish? Lawyers? Uh, abogados. El grande avocado. Av <laughs> That's not Spanish. <laughs> this is because English speakers mistook the real Spanish word for avocado, aguacate, with their word for lawyer, which used to be avocado. Still with us? Yo soy abogado. Avogado. Abogado, a lawyer. Even stranger is the fact that aguacate is derived from the Aztec word aguacatl, which means testicle. No doubt in reference to their similar shapes. Some food for thought the next time you have some avocado toast. Number 7. Disaster A disaster refers to an unfortunate or ruinous event, but its origins lie in both ancient Greece as well as in the stars. And with all this romantic atmosphere, Disasters in the air. The Greeks put a lot of stock in the heavens as a means of reading the outcome or origin of events on Earth. The word disaster comes from the prefix dis, meaning reversal or removal, and the Greek word astron, meaning star. So any disaster is therefore said to be the result of a bad star. This is a disaster. No, this is not a disaster. It is. An earthquake is a disaster. This comes through in other English expressions such as being born under a bad star. Number 6. Smart Alec. No, you're not thinking. You're too busy being a smart aleck to be thinking. When someone gets called a smart aleck, it's usually because they're acting smug or sarcastic, and the person calling them that wants to use another word beginning with A instead. Yes, I guess that means there are two in the Western Hemisphere, huh? Huh? What's your smart ass got to say now? Essentially, a smart aleck is too smart for their own good. However, what's truly shocking is that smart aleck may have been named after a real person. Alec Hogue was a 19th century New York con man, pimp, and thief. Alec and his wife would scam men out of their money using a variety of schemes, eventually landing them in jail. 
the newspapers helped popularize his immortal nickname. Are you being smart with me? If you're being smart with me, young lady, you're gonna be punished. Punished for being smart? For being a smart aleck. So every time we talked back to our parents, they responded by comparing us to a 19th century pimp? Low blow. Number five, berserk. When someone goes or appears berserk, they display great ferocity or rage. The word is derived from the Norse or Viking word berserker, a type of warrior who often displayed reckless and violent behavior in battle. <laughs> The word berserker, in turn, means bear shirt, after berserkers' common practice of donning bear skin for warmth and intimidation of their enemies. Their bear-inspired garments may also have been for religious purposes, as bear worship was widespread in Europe's pagan cultures. Number 4. Fizzle When something fizzles, it makes a sizzling or sputtering noise. Although, the word can also mean that something has failed or run out of steam, as in, this explanation fizzled out. Mm, normally, your father's crackpot schemes fizzle out as soon as he finds something good on TV. Anywho, fizzle comes from the Middle English term fist, which, back in those days, was another word for, and yes, we swear this is true, breaking wind. How dare you break wind before me? I'm sorry, baby, I didn't know it was your turn. <laughs> More specifically, fizzle means breaking wind without noise. That's quietly farting for everyone slow on the uptake. So you might say that when something fizzles, it's silent but dead on arrival. Much like this joke. Nothing, just fizzled out. Number three, quarantine. An appropriate word to examine during the time of COVID-19. While everyone as of this writing probably knows what it means, quarantine means isolation from outside influence, usually to prevent the spread of disease. Fittingly enough, quarantine originates from the plague containment policies of Italy. During the 1600s, the term quaranta giorni, or space of 40 days, was used by Venice port officials to describe the policy of keeping ships coming from plague-stricken countries at sea for 40 days to ensure there were no afflicted people aboard. Number two, nightmare. Night, that's the time when the sun isn't hitting Earth, and mare, that's a female horse, right? Case closed, everybody go home. Hold your horses, hypothetical person. It's not quite right. Please, God. This is God. <laughs> the mare part of nightmare actually refers to a figure from German and Slavic folklore. A kind of female goblin, the mare was said to sit on the chests of sleeping people and bring on a feeling of suffocation and bad dreams. Hence, nightmares. You killed me, Bart. <laughs> Just in case you needed any more inspiration for your bad dreams, now you can have nightmares about nightmares. Before we get to our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. Mortgage, you're literally paying off your death pledge. Hazard, from the Arabic azar or dice, quite the risk. Clue, from the clue of thread used by Theseus to find his way in the labyrinth. Jumbo, named for a real elephant. Robot, a Czech playwright introduced this word, from robota meaning serfdom. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, sandwich. Sandwich sounds like a town in England. And surprise, surprise, it is. However, the practice of putting food, usually meat, between two slices of bread actually has its origins in a man, not the town. John Montague was the fourth Earl of Sandwich in the 18th century. Montague was a busy man and didn't take traditional meals that often, opting instead for something like beef between two slices of bread. Others, seeing his habit, would request the same as sandwich, giving rise to the word as we use it today. Go and quit cogitating Steinmetz and use an open-faced club, the sandwich. Mmm. Open-faced club sandwich. Although there's some debate over whether Montague was more likely to take his sandwich while working or gambling, and what manner the beef itself was cooked, it's clear that sandwiched somewhere between the varying accounts lies the truth. Do you agree with our picks? Let us know in the comments. And hey, if you're a fan of the song playing right now, be sure to check out the music video for it right here.